everyone how are you I'm going to wait a few moments to let people start joining the live and then we will begin I hope everybody's doing well I have a really fun and awesome project as always planned for you guys today okay and I see people are slowly making their way in hello hello welcome to today's live guys Hi Maggie! Hi Jess! Hi! So happy to have you guys joining me today. Welcome again. And I'm just going to give one or two more moments just to let people get here before we officially begin. Okay, so I hope everyone has been having a really awesome week. I hope they had a wonderful Mother's Day and a good weekend. And we are here back for another session of Extra at Home, the Kids Edition. So as always, I am. my name is Lisa. I'm the lead educator at the Hexer Museum of Art. And what I have planned for you guys today is we're gonna be doing a really cool project. Now, if you're here every week, or maybe this is your first time, uh, just to tell you really quickly what we do is I introduce a work of art that's either from the museum's permanent collection or something that's on view on our website right now, virtually, and we'll learn about it together. And then afterwards, we'll use that as our inspiration and we'll create a project using materials that we all have in our homes. So it should be really good, and I'm excited to show you guys what I have in store for you today. Okay, ducks. So here with me, I have my trusty iPad, cannot go without it. And using this, I will show you guys what kind of artwork we will be focusing on today. Hi, Alyssa. Thank you so much for coming. If you guys are tuning in, please make sure to say hi, uh, send me a wave so I know you guys are here. Great. All right. So I'm going to be showing you guys a work of art, and this is from the museum's permanent collection and we'll look at it together make some observations notice some different details uh, and then we'll chat about it together so first up ta -da! okay so this is a painting and I want you guys to take a few moments to take it in you can start from the top work your way to the bottom and while you're looking at it can you guys tell me where your eye is drawn to first what do you guys notice right away in the painting? What would you guys say? <laughs> okay, so Jess said that the somebody looks grumpy. Said she looks grumpy. So the main focus in our painting here is this little girl sitting in a chair. And like Jess mentioned here, she does look kind of grumpy. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on her face a little bit so we can see better. All right, yeah, so her uh, her mouth is downturned and she's definitely not smiling, so it makes it look like she's not happy to be here at all. Okay, and Maggie said that she sees a candle and a girl in a chair. Very good. Okay, both answers are correct. So when we have a work of art or a painting like this one, and the main focus is a person or maybe multiple people, we call that a portrait. So this is a portrait of a little girl, and the title of this is uh, Elizabeth in a Red Chair. So that little girl's name is Elizabeth. And this is done by an artist whose name is Fairfield Porter. And fun fact, this is actually Fairfield's daughter, Elizabeth. And so to do this, he had to ask her to pose for him while he created this painting. And I'm sure you guys know, when you take a picture, it's instant, right? You just get the photo right away. You get to see what it looks like. But with the painting, if you're posing for somebody live, is that a quick process? Do you think that's going to take a short amount of time or a long time? What do you guys think? Okay, so definitely takes longer than it would to just take a photograph of somebody. So maybe that's partially why Elizabeth looks a little bit grumpy or not happy with sitting in that chair. You guys imagine having to sit still for hours maybe even? It's definitely not my thing. I have way too much energy to be just sitting on a chair like that for forever and ever. So Mag uh, Elizabeth is actually pretty good for posing for her dad even though that she has that expression on her face. Yeah, exactly. Just said that she'd be bored. I could not agree more with you. So she has more patience than we do, clearly. Uh, so looking at the portrait of Fairfield's daughter here, Elizabeth, 
the title of it is red chair so not only do we notice elizabeth but that color red really pops out as well especially because if we look at the background is there a lot going on in the background do we have a lot of vibrant colors in the back no so we see a lot of whites a lot of neutral colors uh, and so it makes the red stand out even more in contrast and if you guys notice what else is red in this painting other than the chair? There's one more thing that's red. What do you guys see? What else is red in this painting other than the chair that she's sitting in? Okay, so if you guys notice, looking up nice and close, her shoes are also red, so they match. And it kind of makes me wonder, did she happen to choose those just because those are her favorite shoes or did her at her dad ask her to wear it because it matched the chair uh questions okay and yes everybody is agreeing with the shoes awesome so when i look at a painting like this and it's just a person sitting on a chair it kind of makes me think well what's the story here or what what was going on behind the scenes and it almost makes me wish that this was a video and i could press play and see the scenes unfold after this or maybe rewind and see what was going on beforehand but because we actually don't know we really have to use our imagination to think of the story and another word for a story is a narrative so with that, I'm actually going to show you guys another work of art. Yes, today is special. I not only have uh, one piece that we're going to be using, but we have two pieces. So I'm excited to show you the second one here. And it is... Ta-da! Okay. I hate that there's a glare here. All right. So what observations can we make about this second piece? What would you guys say is the main focus here? So before we called the original painting, Elizabeth in a red chair, a portrait. Do you guys think this is a portrait as well? Hi, Tony. Thank you so much for joining. We're just looking at some art before we get into our project right now. So this is called Yidlim in a green chair and this is actually done by an artist whose name is me carlos ramirez and she's actually a student artist who's currently on view in our new exhibition called long island's best and so actually what what me carlos did was that she used this painting from fairfield porter as her inspiration to create her own piece which was yidlam in a green chair so while elizabeth was the artist's daughter yidlam is actually mccarlis's little sister and so she also used a family member to create her portrait so for long island's best what artists have to do is like i said they choose another work as their inspiration when they come and visit the museum so I keep using the word inspiration all throughout today. And what that means is you're not copying what somebody else does, but rather you're, you really love what another artist has done and you wanna do that, but in your own unique way. And so we can see that this is a painting just like the first one we were looking at, but their styles are very different from each other. Okay, and so while we're talking about the background, please notice that McCarlis also did the same thing where her background is white and then the floor is a brown, which is a neutral color, and it really makes that dress and the color of this chair really stand out with everything that's, uh, with the colors of the background and the ground. Okay, hi guys. Hi, again. thank you for joining. Hi, McCarlis. Okay, so we're really excited. We have the artist joining us here today. Uh, and honestly, I will hope you have your little sister near you to show her that uh, we have her painting of her right here. So if you guys look closely at the expression on her face, is it similar or different to Elizabeth's and the original painting we were looking at? So 
I would say they kind of look a bit similar, right? They kind of look bored. Maybe they were sitting there for a long time. And I actually know because I got to talk to Meet Carlos uh, live when we had our award ceremony. And I asked her a few questions about her painting. And she actually said that her little sister was not happy to have to put on a dress and sit and pose uh, to have her picture taken. But I think it all turned out for the best. And this really, really came out super gorgeous. Okay, and I see you guys said that her expression was similar. Very good. Thank you. Oh, yes, and Maggie said that the mouth was similar. Very cool. So I think both pieces do a really nice job of making you curious about what's going on behind the scenes. And notice that proportion also plays a really big role here. Because when you're looking at this, is each of the little girls bigger than the chair? No, they look how they would in real life. So they're pretty realistic looking. And I think both artists did a really great job in capturing uh, the scene and their people that they chose for their portrait. Okay, so without further ado, we are now going to be getting into the project. So I'm really excited to show you guys what we'll be doing today. And again, our inspirations for today were Elizabeth in a Red Chair by Fairfield Porter and Yidlim in the Green Chair by Mikarlis Ramirez. So I'm super excited to show you guys what I decided to do after seeing their two works. So I thought we could make our very own family portraits. And by that, you don't necessarily just have to use, um, you know, a person. Let's say nobody in your family wants to pose for it. That's totally okay. You can also use maybe your pet or you can use an action figure or a stuffed animal or maybe you want to use a mix of things. You can actually make a kind of still life and use that as a your baseline for creating your project. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys uh, what I created. Very excited to show you. Ta-da! So you guys might have seen this uh, going around on our website or on our social media, um, but so did I choose a family member? Who is this supposed to be? She's pretty famous. Does anybody know her name? This is my favorite. Hello Kitty. And so I actually have quite a few of these, uh, but I decided on my favorite, which is Ballerina Hello Kitty, to use for my portrait in my project. <laughs> okay, cool. So people are liking the Hello Kitty. So what I did for Hello Kitty was I found a chair that I wanted to use, although you don't have to use a chair. You can also just sit on the ground, lean it on somewhere, really think about what kind of background you want to use for your, your project. And uh, once you do that, you can kind of place your object or your thing or your, if you're working with a person in whatever way you want to capture your drawing. So I, I found my chair and I set my Hello Kitty down and then I got a nice clean piece of paper. So this week's project is really simple in terms of uh, materials. So you need a piece of paper as always and then you're going to need a pencil and an eraser. And what I used for this project was colored pencils, but you can also use crayons, like I always say, markers, oil pastels, chalk pastels. If you want to get a little bit messier, maybe you can use paint. It is all up to you. But before you decide on your coloring materials, we have to make a really good sketch. So our foundation is going to be really important here before we get to the coloring. Okay, all right, so with the piece of paper, what you need to do is you need to make sure you have good sight of the still life that you have created. Uh, and you have to remember, remember I was talking about proportion just before. So once you're making your drawing, the biggest tip or advice that I could give you is to make sure you're using markers for yourself. So if Hello Kitty is smaller than my chair, make sure that when you're drawing it on your paper that that, is the same, that it looks the same from how you're seeing it in real life. So when I first began, I started with things in the background or the bigger things in that were going to be on my paper. And then at the very end, I started drawing Hello Kitty. And I'm actually going to bring her up here again. 
Uh, so I first began by making my chair. And if you guys notice, I actually zoomed in quite a bit. You can't see the legs of my chair, whereas with uh, Fairfield Porter and me, Carlos, we could actually see more of the background and the chair than what I included here. Uh, but it's also just because the object that I was working with was smaller, it wasn't a person. So I decided that I wanted to have more of a focus and I needed to make her bigger. So that made me end up cutting off more of my chair and not include as much of my background. But again, these are all choices that you guys are gonna make as you start your own drawing. So question, as I'm explaining this here, uh, what would you guys decide to choose for your project if you were gonna make a portrait? Will you use a real person? Are you gonna use a pet if you have one at home? Maybe if they're sleeping, you could take advantage of them staying still. Um, are you going to use a stuffed animal like I did or maybe your favorite uh, action figure if you have one at home? I would really love to know. Uh, so again, I started with the chair first and then I made the marks for my floor and then I started doing my Hello Kitty. So once your entire sketch is done and ready, you then get to the really fun part, which is coloring and really bringing it to life. Now. I this is today's project and I was really excited to bring it to you guys and it was a little bit different because we used two works of art as our inspiration for this project okay and Matt okay some people are saying what they're gonna be using Maggie's gonna be using her stuffed animal Jess will be using her cat Eowyn fantastic so if you guys do do this project please take a picture of the finished product and post it online and tag us so I can see all the fabulous things that you guys have created. I love seeing uh, what you guys do. So with, with that, that was this week's Hector at Home, the kids edition. I was super happy to have you guys here today. And again, I'll be back next week with another project. Thank you so much to me, Carlos, for joining us on screen today. Uh, I absolutely loved your work and I'm really happy we got to use it for this week's live. So have a great day, guys, and I'll see you next week. Bye.